terrible time of destruction. And that Mount Vesuvius, what causes it finally to erupt, he says that the largest concentration of negative thinking on the planet is actually in Rome. And uh, Mount Vesuvius itself isn't in Rome. It's quite a ways away. I, uh, I think it's like 100, 150 miles away. I may be wrong. I'm forgetting my geography a little from when I was over there. But he says, actually, the Mount Vesuvius, if you could see below the ground, that the, uh, the volcano itself doesn't go straight down, but actually bends over and uh, goes underneath the city of Rome that the negative thinking in Rome, the subconsciousness in Rome, will be a factor in triggering Mount Vesuvius, and that will be the last major event just before World War III. So if we hear about Mount Vesuvius starting to spurt, or does, then watch very carefully. Uh, in the middle of the night sometime, uh, World War III is going to break out, and somebody is going to attack somebody. So we do live in pretty dangerous times. Here in 92, we're looking at Russia suddenly having... Uh, tens of thousands, I think something like 27 or 37,000 warheads that have yet to be dismantled. We have all over the East all sorts of third world nations which have over the years purchased and uh, built uh, terrible missiles of their own. Uh, look what just happened in the Desert Storm thing where we found Saddam Hussein was building nuclear devices, chemical missiles. Fortunately their technology seemed to be a little sad over there. But uh, we're going to pay the price, probably, for selling all these people arms. I remember the rationalization of our own people in Congress years ago when uh, they were talking about selling planes and missiles and so forth to countries in the East. And they just commented that, well, we might as well do this, because if we don't do it, some other country will. Well, that's pretty silly thinking. You know, just because somebody else may give a child a match uh, doesn't mean we have to. You know, we, we're probably contributing to our own death and destruction here by arming all these maniac people who have no responsibility with this type of technology. So I would suppose that from an extraterrestrial's point of view, looking down on Earth, this would indeed seem to appear to be kind of an insane planet. It's interesting that on one of the first contacts that Billy Meyer had with the Pleiadians, uh, they said something that went like this, that we see the planet Earth uh, rushing headlong to its own destruction that could only be averted by change in mass consciousness. And that seems to be about where we are. We are at a point where we are rushing headlong to obviously a lot of destruction. You only have to watch the evening news at night to see that there are major problems, wars, death all over the planet. Uh, not to mention just the natural problems. All the famine, uh, all of the water problems, drought, death from disease everywhere, and of course we're facing uh, the problem here even with AIDS, uh, but the natural disasters are going to cause major loss of life. The World War III throughout Europe and Asia will be devastating. It even talks in there also about China uh, apparently taking advantage or seizing the opportunity to march into India at some point and hit New Delhi, wipe it out, take over India. So if you've... Um, had any inclination to go to India to see it, you might want to do that soon. I know myself, I've wanted to go to Kashmir and kind of follow the path, the old path of Emmanuel, and uh, look into some of that old history. If you're thinking about seeing India, you might want to do it soon because India apparently will be gone. It will be overrun by the Chinese and ruined forever, and they will sweep into the east after that. Interestingly enough, that most of these um, uh, prophecies. Uh, follow pretty much the same line even of Nostradamus. If you've read some of the books on Nostradamus, of course there are many people who have believed to translated the codes of us, uh, the quatrains of Nostradamus, but uh, in most of the books they seem to maybe not get the dates right, but pretty much all these events are the same. As well, this falls in line pretty much with biblical prophecy. So here we've had a prophecy for almost 2,000 years telling us about this time and the things that would happen, and yet we paid no attention. Well, at least the masses haven't. I tend to think that in some parts of this planet, probably underground, certain governments, uh, probably our own, have gone to great trouble probably to start or initiate uh, new societies which will survive all of this. It's quite possible that as some UFO speakers talk about, there may already be colonies on the moon or working on building them on Mars to actually, dis uh, survive, all to actually dis uh, survive all of this. And maybe that's what's going to happen, that there will be major destruction on this planet. 
It might even be unleashed to some extent by some of the governments just to kill off all the illogical, insane third world. And it can be repopulated and recleaned up then at a later time when there's a much smaller, more sane uh, group of people left. Well, whatever uh, the case may be, uh, here we are at historical times. We're on the very eve of destruction, as someone once said before. It's 92. Events easily will start happening uh, very soon. Uh, we can probably certainly look forward to the earthquakes and volcanoes, which are already happening all over the planet, to begin to pick up and get stronger and stronger. So watch out for these red-skinned people in Peru that come forward, which are a signal of the beginning of bad times. And keep your eye on Mount Vesuvius for an eruption, because that will surely begin the beginning of World War III. Interesting also in the uh, predictions, which were back in 76, uh, there was some prophecy about Russia invading into Turkey and taking that over. Uh, Russia, as we know now, doesn't exist. It's more or less been disbanded. Of course, the KGB is still uh, in existence, so something may actually happen there yet. But it talks in there about Russia uh, being part of the major World War scenario and actually taking action against some countries. But uh, it looks as though Russia's kind of broken up and uh, is having enough internal problems of its own. So it's quite possible that since that uh, time period when those prophecies were made, that there could have been some intervention on behalf of ETs or free will of man or whatever, and maybe events are changing a little bit. I would tend to think that events are speeding up. It may not be as bad as originally thought. I think consciousness surely is rising around the world. We can look here to the recent elections in America and get some hope there. For years, people have not paid much of any attention to their politics. We become a lazy country more and more just wanting our country to do something for us, living our own little lives and not pitching in and taking any part in what's going on. And now we've seen a major part of the country starting to get uh, more and more active in the politics. Because of Ross Perot, if nothing else, he's rallied people everywhere to start becoming more responsible and paying attention to our problems. And now as I'm making this tape, which is in November of 92, uh, we're looking forward to having the administration of Bill Clinton, uh, which, by the way, he's not mentioned at all in the prophecies. I see no name about that anywhere. So it'll be interesting to see what's going to happen with the momentum of people caring about government just a little bit now and getting a fresher, younger man into office with some new ideas to go confront Congress with. We have a very difficult economy, so perhaps the future of the world is going to start changing a little bit for the better. If we as Americans can start taking our responsibility of leadership a little better, taking a little better part in how we actually affect other countries, instead of leaving it up to the CIA to either kill the leaders or take them over uh, through deadly means, perhaps we can actually become, start becoming an inspiration to other countries around the world uh, through our leadership, through our wisdom, and role modeling as being citizens of the 21st century. Well, there's one other little set of uh, transmissions here from the Batali level that uh, came in in 1981, about 4 in the morning. And then um, there's one other set after that on the 19th of November, 1981, uh, in the afternoon, about 5.30 in the afternoon. And this was information all surrounding the uh, Third World War and the events that would happen there. We talked earlier about... Uh, that the Antichrist would actually come, that the 27 years of war as prophesied was at the moment probably going to go down uh, just pretty much the way it had always intended because nothing was being done to change mass consciousness. Although that was prophesied in 76, and again it's a prophecy that can be changed because of free will. I tend to think that we've actually done uh, quite a bit of groundwork in changing that and even though there probably will be a war, it may not be near as bad as we think. But at any rate, uh, since the purpose of these tapes is to at least inform you about the billion iron material, let me follow through with that and at least go through these prophecies about the Third World War, and you can read them, and then as things are nearly as bad as they turn out to be, uh, we can see you know, how things actually got better when all this is over. It, of course, talks about... Uh, the uh, war starting, it starts off by saying that Europe actually just sinks in ashes and embers, that there's so much bloodshed. There are millions of deaths raging, people are screaming and so forth. The third world fire, it says, is conjured up by the hands of humans through religious sex, greed, hate, and power. 
Well, we've got plenty of that going on the planet, so that won't be too hard to understand. It talks about people, uh, it goes on to say the Third World War is caused because people don't seek the truth. And there's a little bit of lesson here for us about uh, not leading a very spiritual life, but uh, spending mostly a life of material gains, greed, and power. It says Europe will be the central point for all that's going to happen and what's going to happen here. Germany, where life still flowers, there will be a hundred atomic suns will glow and destroy everything in a roaring fire. Most of Germany apparently is just wiped out. The world powerful manage irresponsibly. The Europeans see the world fire. Um, the atomic fire is going to burn pretty much everything there. There's a lot of talk about all this fire. It says the powerful people crawl in to secure bunkers and hide out, uh, while the rest of us have to stay up on the ground without any protection and are killed. Uh, that's, it says, thus the powerful survive in the bunker shrines. Uh, they, the great of the world, play poker for power, and each of them hides, says, while they're laughing, and while they toss their deadly fire on peace-seeking Europe as pay. So Europe is really going to catch it here. It talks about the atomic death in Europe where chemical and bacteria bombs fall. Radioactive radiation destroys much of the life. Under waves of neutrons, the countries will quake. It says it sp uh, spreads a slow death torturously, which lasts for days, months, and years. Apparently, people, there's so many new diseases caused because of the chemical bombs that uh, people die a very slow, painful death. Um, let's see, it says Thursday, November 19th, 1981, at 5.45 p.m., uh, it goes on talking more about the war. It says, people will be driven unmercifully into horrible deaths, uh, just as it was predicted 2,000 years ago. The cause, of course, again, is going to be politics, religion, and other insanities, which include greed and power. All those things we're so um, very aware of. It says, the, wor the world war will break out in Europe, and every day of no war is precious. It says, the, short is, uh, the times of peace are very short because the world fire spreads extensively and very quickly and is going to start destroying everything unmercifully. Uh, it says, Europe, the center of the power for competition, will be devoured by the powerful of the world who have chosen this area for the battle uh, so that their own land will remain intact. So let's, let's think about that a second. It says that the, the war is going to be caused center stage and so forth in Europe uh, by very powerful people of the world who chose this area for the battle. So someone outside of Europe is actually kind of setting the war up and making sure that it happens there. Well, that could be, uh, who else could cause that? Us, Arab nations, China, something like that. So um, it says the powerful beat their war axe on Europe's head and while Europe spoils in the fire, the power-hungry thirst for more power, therefore other parts of Mother Earth will be subjected to their power and greed. So it's time to go to war. On Friday, November 20th, 1981, another transmission comes through, which starts to talk even more about it. And it gets into the anti-Logos thing, the Antichrist, where he's sweeping over the whole world. Christian and non-Christian countries as well, it says, fall to their death. Then um, let me kind of move along here to some of the better stuff. Um, here again, it reiterates that 25 million people will be led to death alone. Will be led to death alone in India uh, because the uh, yellow storm wave of China, they call that the yellow storm, uh, pushes into India and starts the battle for New Delhi. And after this victory, uh, all of India will be completely conquered by the power of the Chinese. Talks about Persia and Turkey will also fall into the war. Uh, when Russia invades into those countries to take it over because of the oil reserves. But this won't even be enough for Turkey, that it will also be invaded by another influence. The Christian cults will move in and f try to force the Turks into Christianity. Um, it says uh, this could only be prevented perhaps by maybe the United Nations may try to help, but it probably will happen anyway. The Balkan states fall into a great uproar and begin their own war. Uh, driven into it by the Bolshevists, who will still be continuing their bloody work after their power was even falsely taken from them. Uh, let's see, it goes on here to talk about Africa, and Arabia will be taken in order to make the conquering of Europe easier. Okay, So that's suggesting that the Chinese would do that. They would sweep through India and then move into Africa and Arabia, uh, and that way it's far easier for them to get into Europe. 
says it'll be very rough for the Balkan states.